Hello everyone. So thanks for coming to this last session in the Withers Room. I see it's a very popular one. Uh, very popular and famous topic for you all, uh, managing notifications. So we have uh, Josh Koshi who works in the support team. We have Matt Day, who is the master of ceremony, but he's also the person who developed uh, the notification systems in the school box. Afterwards, we will have uh, Chris Lang from Digestone, uh, who's gonna make a presentation on the push notifications using uh, the Edu app. Over to you guys. Awesome. All right, hey guys. So we're probably gonna start from the start with how to get to the notifications. So as some of you have, may know, with moving to version 17 on your dev. We have renamed it. Um, so as soon as we get it up on here, one moment. Awesome, there we go. Okay, cool. So um, in the past, you used to find this in um, one of the top menu items called messages. We've now renamed it to be a little bit more clearer and it is now called notifications. <laughs> There we go, all right, notifications. Okay, cool. So uh, from here, you've pretty much, you can set up your digest. So this controls when it goes out, um, and I think below we can choose, no, that's pretty much when you want it to go out and uh, what time. So from here, the main part where we configure the settings is in the nice little button now that does say configure message settings. In the past, it was a tiny little URL that you might miss, so if you're still running 16 or 16.5, you'll find it there. So, as you can see here, we've got um, the notifications that control all three of your different roles. You've got uh, student, staff, and parents, and one overarching um, one that lets you control all of them at once. So, can you minimize the send, the first one, just so we can go over it? Cool. Um, so, here you can see, uh, basically, what you can control. Um, you've got the left-hand side, which is how you want to get them sent out. So, you can choose either instant notification or via the digest. And then on the right hand side, next to the plus, you can get your two methods. So you can either have via the app, which Chris we talk, um, Tim will be talking about later, and email. So uh, if you just want to click on the pencil button. So this is the edit screen where we can control what's going on. Okay, so the top part here, as you can see, is you can choose the, uh, the options that'll be available for a user to use. So as you know, if you go into a user <coughs> and you click on their profile, they, as, a, as your own user, you can control how you guys receive your notifications. So this basically shows um, what options you can give them. So you can lock them into the app or digest. Uh, sometimes you do that for parents. And the second one is, oh, sorry, the first one is, <coughs> now you confuse me. Uh, so the second one is actually that. It's the default settings for them. And the top one is the ones that have the options that they can choose. All right. So you can close that one off. And then, oh yeah, the bottom section here. So as you know, you can have many different roles that fall between them. Um, student parents, uh, sorry, uh, junior student parents, senior stu student parents, and then so you, all, all you have to do is set it once, and then you can pass it on to all the other roles that you can choose. Do we have any of them on here? No, it doesn't look like, okay, cool. So there's a number of different headings, um, headers that we have for what you can control and how they're delivered. So let me just go over here so I can actually read it. So the first one is probably one of the biggest one is the due work, um, how you can control the, uh, how those <coughs> notifications get sent out. Um, so as you can see, so the first one that we've got is uh, when due work is open to students. So you know how you can control the dates where they get available to students. Um, so you can, can choose, sometimes you just want to send notifications via just an instant or you want it to go directly to their phone. And um, yeah, so this is, so you wanna go to the next one? Quiz. So again, we've got a whole bunch of different options for quizzes, when it opens, uh, when it's due soon. Um, and there's also, so as we're on the all page, you can see the notifications that go out to parents as well, which includes stuff like um, when they are attempting a quiz that is due soon or to let them know that it's due. Um, sending a message when, you know, sometimes you need to update a quiz on the go. Um, and stuff like that. So we'll go down to the next one. So we've got forum stuff as well. Um, so just the main stuff, you know, uh, letting know that a forum you're a part of has been posted on, as well as when someone has uh, replied to one of your posts. Uh, 
Yeah, so news as well, so school news and as well as homepage news as they are controlled differently. Um, so you can control those as well. Uh, calendar, sending a message when, yeah, when it, so when a calendar event is about to start as well as you know, when it's updated. Uh, the wiki, which is you know, creating a wiki, revising a wiki and all of that. Right, so the other, uh, other sections that we currently cover um, with notifications. If you're f familiar with this page, um, bear with us. Um, we know that there are some people in the room who, this is the first time they've seen this page. Um, so I'm just sort of skipping through the kinds of things that we cover. So groups being the next one that has to do with group management permissions when people join groups, leave groups, all that sort of stuff. Um, the content management, uh, this one trips people over a little bit uh, because that covers specifically on home pages, files, folders, links, and text boxes. So um, that's what's considered home page content. Uh, and so from a CMS perspective, notifications will be sent out on modifications of those things or you know, people adding stuff, etc. The resource booking system, uh, similar to the calendar system, um, has a lot of similar notifications going out through it. Grades, um, specifically separate to do work and quiz, um, has to do with the report card. And so uh, if you've got communications going on on the grades page, that comment thread that exists there, um, those notifications can go out as well. Uh, pastoral care um, has a few separate sections. Um, and this more has to do with the moderators receiving uh, notifications um, at the appropriate times, uh, as opposed to, you know, anybody else. You know, your students aren't going to get a ping saying someone's submitted a pastoral record about you. Um, EOTC um, events outside the or excursions outside the classroom. Sorry, education outside the classroom. My apologies. Um, it's again similar to events, but um, able to be configured separately. S uh, fixtures, named sports fixtures, um, <laughs> should be. Uh, just fixtures, but that um, has to do with all the fixtures components. Um, and there's also an import variant on that. The, um, we know that this particular screen is very overwhelming, generally speaking. Um, I was chatting to someone yesterday um, who sunk in a good two hour session, just like, oh no, we'll just you know, sit down for 10 minutes and we'll, uh, we'll sort this out, sort out the notifications, and two hours later, okay, we're going to need to come back for a second session. Uh, so it is, um, we, we are aware that as far as, you know, getting into Schoolbox, this can be a very overwhelming page, particularly if you've never seen it before, you didn't know it existed, um, and that sort of stuff. One sec. Um, and we do try as best we can um, to, to listen to feedback and to be able to set um, reasonable defaults um, so that you don't necessarily have to start from scratch and figure out for every individual item, yes, we want this to go to parents, this to go to students by this mechanism and this other mechanism, et cetera, et cetera. Um, but there is, there is definitely that conversation to be had about going, you know, trying to tune and tweak your notifications to be appropriate to your community. Um, but we hope that, you know, uh, at least by default, sort of some generally sensible uh, notifications are going out. Question? Question about pastoral care notifications. Sure. You mentioned they're only for the moderators. Is it not possible then to configure it so that certain notifications will go to a student or to a parent? For instance, if they're receiving a badge, some commendation, would that not be possible? Uh, at the moment, uh, the, the pastoral care system, the audiencing of the pastoral care note is probably the key detail there. Um, I shouldn't have said just moderators, I should have said the audience of the, the pastoral care note. And so if the student um, or the parent is included in that audience, um, they should be receiving a, uh, a notification to that end. Um, however, it's not currently geared towards students necessarily receiving pastoral notes about themselves. Um, the notifications that go up, just in, in case people are worried about the security or you know sensitive information concerns, um, pastoral notifications all simply say um, there is a pastoral record um, for you to to look at, um, 
and so the notification doesn't give away any particular details about what the content of that notification, uh, sorry, what's behind that notification. Um, mostly because, you know, if a, uh, if a teacher is, say, screencasting in the classroom or something, and then all of a sudden a notification pops up, it's like um, Bob Smith um, has a new pastoral record and that kid is sitting in the class, uh, <laughs> it's not exactly the best idea for the whole class to know, ooh, Bob's in trouble. <laughs> okay. Um, yeah, so yeah, we're at the point of fielding for questions. Currently, no. Um, so, calendar moderator um, isn't mm, someone correct me if I'm wrong. Calendar moderator isn't something that we uh, do at the moment. Um, they, there is um, in the in the user modification, you can set someone up to um, be in charge of the the calendar subsystem. Um, but as far as notifications hooking into that, that's not something that we've implemented so far. Um, but it, it is technically feasible, absolutely. Um, just not something that we currently have. Uh, they've been in there for a little while. Really? Yeah, they've, they've been there. The yeah, when you res when uh, the student or the parent or the teacher makes a comment, yeah. um, that will go to the other audiences as per the checkboxes. Oh that's, awesome. that's that's a thing. <laughs> 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 um, something else that I wanted to talk about. Um, um, separate from the UI is a whole lot of back-end stuff uh, that we've done which has landed in version 17. There are two particularly new features uh, that went in. Um, one was the ability to receive notifications from alt-sourced material and so if you have alt-sourced components um, on your page, uh, so you know components on your page that point to alternate sources um, you can actually have the notifications draw through uh, from the page that it was linking from as though it was um, as though the person were um, on that page. The other one is that we also hooked the notifications excuse me into the inheritance structure as well. So if you remember last year we rolled out uh, folders folders being able to inherit permissions from one folder above or that one then inherits and then inherits and then inherits back to the root. Uh, we've also extended p notification subscriptions to be part of that as well. And so um, the ability for as though you've got uh, your notification from uh, the inheriting page, um, it'll be from the top. then probably not, no. Um, in terms of course linking and the sort of notifications in, in that area as well, that's an area under investigation as well, like um, as far as, uh, well actually just linking, the, the link that exists between a course and the classes to which it is deployed, um, that in general is an area that we're sort of looking at um, as what we can do with that and how we can make that better. Currently, yes. Uh, it can be used that way. So, um, using uh, using the group permissions um, of the UPS uh, to be able to essentially set particular people into particular folders at particular times, um, or, or depending on 
whatever attributes you've got your UPS set up to work with. You can, yeah, use the UPS to enroll people into particular folders or classes or groups, and then from that, they will receive the notifications. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, sure. Uh, to the best of my knowledge, that, that is the way that um, we understand schools are using it at the moment. Um, so the UPS facilitates that, that automation. Um, and we recognize that, that that membership of parents isn't necessarily exactly what you want. You don't necessarily want them to be explicitly members of the page. Um, and so that I feel like I'm saying things are under investigation, but it's true. We are um, actively looking at um, what, how we can approach the my child is in a folder and I want the notifications of that folder without being in that folder. Um, but we, yeah, we are um, currently working on a solution to, to solve that. Um, exactly when we'll figure that out, I can't say, but um, we are trying. Yeah, sure. Sure. Um, Josh, you want to bring up um, one of the modals? Yep. So uh, from here, um, this first oops, sorry, first row being uh, the options that are available, uh, if you were to deselect all but one option, that has the effect of um, locking that particular role to that particular communication method. Um, and so if, um, if options are provided, um, then they're able to choose as they, as they like. But um, yeah, if you were to select only one, then that would be the way that they will receive it and they're not able to change it. These ones on the right are a little bit uh, more tricky. The, the push notification and the instant email, they both depend on the instant notification being fired. And so inherent in that is therefore they'll receive the notification in Schoolbox um, as well as either of these other methods. And so if you want an instant email, um, they have to receive the instant message, but then they do still have the option of removing the email. Um, and just receiving it in Schoolbox. Yep. Great question. We get that support request a lot. Um, at the moment, those values are hard coded. Um, but so for events, for example, it's 10 minutes. For due work, no uh, for LMS notifications, it's two hours. But um, it's definitely on our radar uh, as something to make configurable. Um, The, the overdue notification fires immediately. Um, the upcoming you haven't yet submitted and you need to submit, that's a two hour window. Um, but yeah, it's def it, we get a, a number of support requests asking for that to be configurable, so yeah. wish I could tell you 17. <laughs> um, that was one of my uh, major priorities for uh, the 17 release. Um, unfortunately, it didn't make the cut. Uh, so I would love to be able to tell you 17.5. Um, the ticket is sitting there. It's ready to go, ready to be actioned. Um, it just requires resourcing. Um, and so um, I, me personally, I'm very aware of that particular issue and am looking forward to being able to fix it. Um, so 
unfortunately, I can't give you a timeline, but as far, from my priority perspective, it's as soon as possible. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, the little wins. Oh, yeah. Um, just as a note about, um, do we have IT administrators in the room? Yes, okay, several. Um, have you noticed that the notifications tends to take a fair amount of server load um, in terms of running and all that sort of stuff? Uh, 17, we did a pretty significant overhaul of the code base. Um, we wrote, rewrote about a third of the notification system um, to take that load off. Um, and so we've managed to improve both memory consumption and CPU consumption. Uh, and so generally speaking, you shouldn't see the kind of load spikes, particularly um, if you remember when restarting um, a server was sort of a, a fraught kind of experience. So like, oh, if I've got too many messages sitting in Rabbit, then is this just going to all topple over when I reboot it? That will no longer be the case. Um, so hopefully that's, um, that's a relief to some. Which kinds of notifications are we talking? The way in which notifications get generated are done through uh, the CRUD actions of the system. So the, the, uh, the create, the update, and the, well, not so much read, but create, update, and delete actions of the system. And so if any particular message were needing to be reprocessed, um, that would essentially be a, a recreation of that particular action um, that was taking place. And so if the event was updating a submission box, for example, um, going through and updating the submission box again would essentially refire everything through. And so uh, one of the ways the notification system works is to just, it just goes, okay, I'll just regenerate all of that. It then performs all the routing again, sends the notifications onto the appropriate lists ready for distribution. Um, but it also deduplicates um, those messages as they go as well. So any particular user won't receive the exact same notification more than once. And so you can, you can replay those events. Um, I guess there are some that can't necessarily be replayed. And so that would be something we'd need to visit separately. But at least for, for certain events where you can replay the action. Um, first thing that pops into my mind is um, for those sorts of testing purposes using the dev server um, um, just to avoid um, that situation. I know that's not always possible, um, but uh, as far as being able to disable the, the propagation of notifications from a particular event, um, that would probably be tricky. Uh, decouple, sort of um, being able to create a way to decouple, decouple that. Um, but throw in a throw in a feature request, and uh, and we'll look at it. In the use case you mentioned, you were talking about marking, I think, like a rubric. That can be drafty. That process as the draft workflow um, that was released in sixteen five. So that is one way to draft marking without it public, without it notifying people. Files, for example, documents that we want parents to view, and 
Uh, if it's set up to send, then you'll probably receive two. Yeah. Created, deleted. Yeah, yeah, throw in a feature suggestion, yeah. Let Chris present, and then if we get to the end of the end of the session, and we've got time, Thank you, uh, we're done. All right. All right, beautiful. Thanks, Matt. Um, thank you, everyone, for having me today. A uh, huge thank you goes to the Schoolbox team. Amazing event every year, and it's just grown exponentially. And we're you know we're so happy to be here. Um, so look for those. Well, I haven't had the uh, chance to meet. My name's Chris Lang, and I'm the Director of Sales and Marketing at Digistore. So we're a Queensland-based uh, software development company. Uh, we work with about 250 schools around Australia, New Zealand, and Asia. Uh, we build custom mobile applications, websites, online enrollment solutions, and more recently, a K-12 CRM. So we take an immense pride in the user experience of all the systems that we build, and we work to integrate where possible. So over the last five years, um, I've been fortunate enough to work with um, you know, close to 300 app deployments uh, for a number of schools. And today I'm here to discuss the, I guess, push notifications within the Edu app for Schoolbox. Cool, so firstly, we'll just uh, give you a rundown of, oh, is that up? There we go. Ah, oh, cool, fantastic. Firstly, I'll give you a rundown on what I'll be talking about today. So I just want to explain a bit about Digistorm and Schoolbox, the relationship. Um, filling a gap for school communications and what the Edu app for Schoolbox does. Um, the notifications explained, push notification administration. I feel that that's already been a bit trumped by um, by the guys here. Uh, and tips for creating a mobile communication strategy. All right, and then then a bit of questions. So as I said, I think it's important for you to understand the the context of the relationship between the two companies. Um, you know, in 2015, St Kennigan College from New Zealand uh, reached out to us, pretty much along the lines of, hey, we want to have a look at an app. Uh, they had seen a lot of generic, more templated uh, driven systems. Um, they wanted to deliver a lot more personalized information through the app. We got talking to Sean and the team here, and look, we realized that we had complementary skill sets. Uh, we specialize in one thing, they specialize in another. Those conversations that continued, really kind of, we saw that both saw the benefits in forming an integration partnership of such. Um, and look. What we did, did you still, we took a bit of a risk in, um, at the time and look, we put some resources and we built a dedicated framework around their learning management system. Look, I'm, uh, you know, I'm really proud to say that you know, we're working with close to 60 of their schools now. Um, so it's been an incredible achievement and you know, we get such great support from the team. So filling a gap in school communications. So a lot of this you know, I'm, I'm sure I don't need to tell you, but traditional communication methods are just not meeting the needs of modern members. Um, if we look at how schools have communicated in the past, um, you know, we see that it's generally a very tedious process with a very high degree of uncertainty over who's receiving what. Um, and you don't really have an understanding of what goes in or, or how they, who is actually catching, getting that information. So newsletters are probably, probably the epitome of this. And, and I'm, I'm standing here preaching to the converted. Um, you know, they went back in my day when I was in primary school of double-sided A4 pieces of paper. Um, I'm talking to some schools now and you know, they're every, you know, every two weeks and they're 28 pages uh, on a PDF. Um, you know, and the user experience of that is just is a shocking. I mean, often someone who's in, you know, who has a child in year 10, they, they just don't really have any interest on things for year seven, for example. And it might be hidden on page 18 of 28. So as schools evolve, 
so do their audience members. Um, you know, we work with about 70 schools on their websites. And if you look at those stats, we're seeing about 50 to 60% of those visitors view it on a mobile device. Um, it is one of the, you know, the fastest growing areas. Everyone seems to be evolving, going down the mobile first strategy. And really the challenge for schools is learning how to embrace this shift and bring it in to improve your internal communication needs. So push notifications come in right here. So push notifications are instant, they're manageable, targeted, and you know, one of the most important things, they're cost effective. Okay, so, so since Schoolbox extended their push notification, uh, notification API to Digistorm um, and to their pro and elite customers, um, our, our EduApp integration allows for granular notifications to be sently, sent directly by Schoolbox and delivered by Digistorm. So that's just the first thing I want to touch on. Schoolbox sends us the push notification, we deliver it. Okay, so the push notifications are triggered by Schoolbox to Digistorm. Single sign-on to the school's um, Schoolbox instance means that notifications can be instantly accessed via the app uh, without the need to re-authenticate. So the user logs in once, it remembers the details. Every time the password is changed, it'll boot the user out. So every time the app's launched, it will re-authenticate, check to make sure those logins are, the, um, are correct. If not, it'll boot it out. Or if they have signed out, they'll have to re-log in again. And we do things like that, like adding Touch ID for those schools that do want to have the ability to make sure that the user's logged out after each session. Um, as with all the notification settings in Schoolbox, they're managed for the notifications administration section, which we just had a demonstration of. Um, so they're all based on those triggers that are defined by the school. It could be when, the, when an event, event is about to start, uh, when someone comments on a news item that you've created. created. Um, and the language and terminology of the push notification that is sent via our app is exactly the same as what you'd see in the instant notification center within Schoolbox. So when the trigger's met, it's fired to the phone. Now, I guess one of the most powerful things about the sequence, and, and honestly, about 90% of the reason why a lot of schools come to Digistorm is because it, it's active engagement. You know, if the user's phone's on sleep, this will pop up. If their phone's not on silent, it'll make a noise. It'll ping them. It's not passive. You're not hoping that they, you know, at that stage they go in or they check their, email, their emails. So the school really isn't dependent on those items, and that's you know, a really big benefit that you can only really get with SMS, which obviously costs. Um, the, the result that we've had from schools have gone down this has been pretty resounding. I mean, I was just talking to Craig, Art and Anglican School in Sydney was one of our first schools. You know, when, when we launched the app with them, I think it was a bit of an unknown for both of us. And, and from what I understand, I talked to Craig, they saw an increase of fourfold um, in the first month in terms of login and engagement. And you can monitor that all through the engagement section within your Schoolbox environment. And as we've worked with more and more schools, we've found that we've had a number of requests who would like to manage uh, notifications for events and content external to Schoolbox. So what we've done, we've, we've got a few integrations. So what we have is we have an alert system where you can send generic alerts, global broadcasts to all schools. Um, it could be something like, uh, you know, School lockdown, for example, is, is a classic case. You could send a push notification instantly. It might be that a new newsletter is available. You want to drive people to the, to the app to look at the newsletter. It might be to promote the PNF AGM. Really, the choice is used, yours to use it as you see fit. We really saw a few years ago, I mean, there are a lot of players in the app development market, and we, we completely, you know, every school's got a choice. What we believe is that you know, it is death by notification. Everyone gets sick of that notification, that white noise. So where these apps are gonna develop, and what we're trying to, I guess, be ahead of the curve with, is making sure that the information that you receive is granular. Um, you know, we've got a, a great integration with Parent Paperwork, which has uh, rolled out to a few of our schools, so that when a permission slip is posted you know, through Parent Paperwork, they receive it, those parents receive a targeted push notification. You know, they can then go in there, sign that slip, agree to that uh, excursion or whatever it may be. We have also a push endpoint. So, you know, if you, your school is fortunate enough to have a dev development team, you're, you know, you, you can use this for your own uses. Um, you can post things to our endpoint that will send a push notification to the user to find that endpoint. That's available for anyone to use. Uh, we've got a full API there that you can t um, tap into and access as you, as you go. So, schools that work with us on implementing an Edu app often ask the same question. 
because you know how do we init initially configure our push notifications? Look, it is crucial. Um, the school really needs to be conscious of not overloading your community with too much information, too many notifications, uh, to the point that you know users look at it, I guess, in a negative light. While at the same time, you need to make sure that the app is doing its job and communicating important and often time critical information. Regular push notifications also um, serve to reinforce the users that the app is current and in use. Uh, you know, I've there's been a few, uh, very few times in my career with DigiStorm that a school has stopped or discontinued with the app. I promise you though, the one reason why they do is because no one's using it. And the reason because no one's using it is because they don't trust it because it's not being maintained and not being kept up to date. Fortunately with the integrations that we have with Schoolbox and other platforms, this doesn't need to, you know, you don't need to worry about this. As long as the Schoolbox is being used, the app will be used. There's absolutely no double handling from the school's perspective that they need to account for. And that's really, you know, been such an important thing that we tried to force to schools, push home to schools, that as long as the app, the school box is being used, the app will serve to be current, and parents trust it. Parents will look at it. I mean, our, our busiest times that we see it is between seven and nine at night and three and four in the afternoon, just after school, at night before when the kids have gone to bed. They check, see what's happening the next day. We're seeing a lot of students, and I, I know every school has their own, um, you know, a, parameters around what, how student use of mobile phones, but we're seeing much more, particularly in the senior schools, a lot more students using the timetables, viewing the class pages, viewing work that's due, um, viewing the notifications at school. We're getting a lot more feedback and starting to pivot the app a bit more to serve that information to those, to those students. So, regular put, so to start, we also recommend that the school start small. It just implements the following two notification settings. Send a message when someone at post school news, or send a message when someone posts home homepage news. Look, I can only speak in general terms. So I know that if your school doesn't leverage news within Schoolbox, this will, then we will have to work with you within the user acceptance testing stage of the app deployment to make sure you're comfortable with the configuration of your settings and you're receiving a good amount of notifications. But really, we find those two toggles allow for the softest introduction to EduApp, and then the school can refine and reiterate as feedback is heard and further requirements gathered. And I promise you, you'll hear feedback. Um, the community is very good at, at, at providing feedback. A lot of schools will review their engagement within the engagement component of Schoolbox. And we're testing over the holiday period and tweaking to make sure that you, know, you can open that up to more and more users and change those notification settings via using data-driven decisions, which is obviously one of the best type. They do need to be considered holistically, though, in conjunction with other communication types available. So are you sending emails? I mean, are you sending, how are you sending the newsletter out? By considering your other channels at the same time, the app can fall into the strategy of, you know, the general communication strategy of the school. So push notification administration for parents. So while the school can choose how they want information to be distributed, users of the Edu app can also further customize their preferences within, as with all communication types within Schoolbox. So we want users to have ownership over the app. You know, that's why we brand them, that's why we make it look like you're in a Schoolbox environment. So within every app that we build, we have a setting section. It has feedback, it has, feedback, has general information, has debugging information for our developers, but it also has the notification settings. So similarly, if you're receiving too many emails, and if it's from Digistore, I apologize. If you're receiving too many emails, you can unsubscribe. What they do there, and, you, and often a lot of companies, you can then edit your preferences to what you would do want to receive because you know, they don't want to lose you completely. So in our notification settings, you click on that button, it'll single sign on you into your Schoolbox environment, and you as a user can edit your notification settings on the fly. So an important part of the app rollout process is the promotion of the application to all user types, and as well the way on the which the school intends on using it. You have to educate the parents, or the f students, or the teachers, how you as a school intend to use the app so they can see the value from the outset you, to push those downloads. So what, what we try to do is provide you full marketing material, marketing packs and information, and also user guides. So user guides that are branded that you can send home to your families to understand how to find the app, how to download it, what sort of information they're going to receive, and how to set their preferences. Further iteration needs to be had within the app, so we often put a notice in the app uh, outlining how to update the communication preferences. But it needs to be you know, considered that it's not an instant thing. I mean, people don't 
you know, people don't read it straight away. I mean, I'm sure sometimes you feel like you're banging your head against a wall, but just that constant reinforcement for over, over a period of time to make sure that they know how to get the most out of their app. Cool. So lastly, I just want to talk about creating a, a mobile communication strategy. So the first thing that really needs to be defined is the objectives for your mobile app uh, communication. So is it to drive usage and adoption of the school walk system? Is it to assist with time critical information or, or co-curricular activities? You know, do you think your sports department will use it? Um, is it to, that you simply want to consolidate your internal systems into an interface you know, that parents actually want to use, that they don't have to enter their login details again, that they can find everything in the one location? Whatever these are, it's worth, it's worth starting by defining what user group you're targeting. Nine times out of 10, it's the parents. But as I had mentioned before, students are coming through. We're seeing you know, a lot more savvy students um, who are much more you know, wanting to use the app um, for much more communication. Uh, we are developing features for that set, and, and a lot of schools who, who have BYOD or one-to-one -one -one devices, we're seeing a lot of um, requests coming through our support desk and, and through our team about custom development for, development for that. But these objectives will allow you to identify those school box updates from the outset. Might also you know, uh, encourage you to say, you know, you want, want to introduce us to another integration partner so we can look at integration. We've, we've got another one coming with um, boarding software Reach just because of this to provide single sign-on and targeted notifications. So that allows you to find out what other systems you want to integrate with your app. While this is at full school box, we do want to make it a bit of a mobile dashboard for your entire school and community. Upon setup, you can set up all the updates that you want to trigger push notifications. And look, don't, things, don't be scared to try things out. You can turn these off at any time. Once it goes live, or once you know, it's in the app store, you can do constant revisions. We can update it six months later with an update. You, know, you can change the menu structure. If you feel that the design isn't get engaged enough, we can update the designer, include new functionality. If you want to add an absentee form or whatever it may be, we can bring that in because that's from the feedback that you've received from your community. Provide training to Skillbox administrators on content writing to ensure it's on brand. Look, I, I know this is easier said than done. Um, I hear complaints about this all the time, particularly when you've got push notifications. But it does bring about an air of kind of accountability and responsibility over the sort of content that needs to go out. Um, you know, we often see when a school brings in an integrated, even just an integrated calendar, the administrators who you were just used to typing things in or just quickly putting things in without expecting it to go public now have to start considering how their actual terminology that they're going to use. And again, the additional alerts that can be sent through the digital edge app system. Supplementing those personalized push notifications using our system, using you know, the likes of Parent Paperwork and another platform, is something to consider. Um, you know, with whether you're going to send a push notification when newsletter is available, whether you want to send wet weather reports for the sport, it's completely up to you. But it's important to keep that in mind that you're not limited around here. Most schools that we work with generally send about two to four push notifications a week. We have some schools that only ever do it in a case of emergency. Uh, then we've got other schools that are, for lack of a better word, trigger happy and are sending thousands and thousands of these a week. Uh, but really, whatever, whatever your objectives are, you need to make the app work towards it. You want to drive the adoption and push your internal systems through the one interface and make sure that you're actually actively engaging your parents, you know, just like Facebook, Facebook is doing with you by sending you birthday reminders every morning. So that about concludes it for me. So I'd like to ask um, if there are any, any questions from now. Mm. Yeah. 
That was actually, that's interesting. That's one of the first things that we've raised. Um, you know, not everything constitutes a push notification. Um, so I have actually spoken to, to James about that, to be completely honest with you. I don't, I don't have a sort of status or ETA. He did indicate to me that it was something they, they were considering, or, and this, this was a few months ago, um, that it was something that, you know, on, on the news page or for certain administrators, they could toggle or push for that specific event. Um, but ultimately, that would be up to the school box team. Sure. So within uh, Schoolbox mobile, uh, within Schoolbox, within the engagement, there's a tab called mobile apps. So you can actually view who's who's logged, how many app registrations you have from different year levels of different groups. Um, so we I can identify that by once they log in, um, who's logged in and the registration. We also put Google Analytics. Uh, we've just rolled out an update recently, and that's got Google Analytics in all of our apps as well. We can get a lot of that data through Google Analytics now. So that, that has been rolled out. We've just deployed, I think we've just finalized the deployment of an update recently. Um, and that w has every school by default now has Google Analytics within the app. And that'll show you sessions, average time, you know, that's spent on it, where they've clicked and so on. Yeah, absolutely, and we've we've had schools do that with our other app for our standard app framework. When they see, you know, they'll schedule those notifications to go out during those peak times to make sure they're all gone gone out in one kind of hit, and then not bother throughout the day. But and look, and the, the whole white noise and and put death by notification, although it is granular and based on those user permissions, it's it is something that we're constantly trying to refine. So yeah, that could certainly work. Yes. Sir. Yeah, that's something that um, I believe our dev teams are talking about. So we, you know, we, we do work very closely, and the, the development teams talk, um, you know, Tim and, and James talk quite regularly about updates, um, and that's something that we, I actually was speaking to James about briefly about that. So we're just looking at feasibility around that. Yeah. Sure. We could look at implementing, implementing that. I mean, it, it would be then when that trigger comes, but, you know, when that, it might be 7 in the morning, suddenly they might get a number at the ones. So that's not there now. No, that's not there now. Yeah. Who, who's going to take care of that? You guys or school that that prob probably would be us, to be honest with you, I'd imagine. I so, yeah, yeah we'll be out. We send it, yeah. We send it. <laughs> you don't want to answer this one? No, it's on you. <laughs> at the moment, no. Uh, those templates are at the. Mo <laughs> uh, I suppose the reason I say at the moment fairly consistently is because what you're suggesting is certainly technically feasible. Um, in the in the existing code base, uh, those templates are hard coded, uh, so every every one of those notifications is templated in a certain way and that's just in the code base it's not configurable currently however um, you definitely something to throw into the forums um, as a feature suggestion um, and get some traction on it um, to yet yeah, to be able to to customize that further for sure
absolutely. Sure. So when we first launched the app, um, we had a, a structure, what we call a timeline. So we had the left-hand left hand hamburger menu come out. Uh, but really, it's right now it's open. So, you know, we can customize it to be in line with your website, um, completely in line with your branding. We can do a mix of you know uh, scrolling news images at the top and then some tiles at the bottom. It, we, we base it off your branding guidelines and your instance. Um, you know, Mel McGill's grammar, uh, we call their app Evie. Um, we try to bring in that consistency. So that design in terms of dashboard, you might look at ours and, and many of them are similar and, and they're icon driven. We just find that's from a user experience perspective the most intuitive way. But it's, we can take your, you know, your lead. We've had other schools who have wanted to do a design and we interpret it. Um, so yeah, it's completely customizable. Yep. That's actually, this is something that we were begging for because we've got a lot of schools who want custom dashboards by role type or role. And that's something we want to be able to do dynamic menu options. And as of, I think, 17, 17 uh, we've been given role types. And that's something we're going to be looking at as a rollout. So each role type will have different menu options, which would be awesome. Yeah. You'd have to have to talk to them. Uh, that's something that we haven't we haven't been able to bring a, bring across. So uh, at the moment, no. Um, but we'd have to talk. We've we've never had any reason to, because we haven't been able to, you know, represent bring out additional information based on the role type. So now I think those conversations will unfold. Yep. Cool. Awesome. Thank you very much, everyone. Uh, have a great day. Cheers.